What's going on, YouTube? Crosscut turning back here again. We've got another project for you this week. These first couple pictures just showing you, uh, we glued them up. We did more of the cedar boards that we did on the uh, four ring pedestal bowl um, out of a cedar plank that my buddy Jeremy helped me cut up uh, a while back. So, this is more of that wood. Uh, this is Crosscut turning. We're going to get to turning right now. I've got a couple of interesting parts of this video for you, so stay tuned. All right, guys, so starting out here, we're just going to get this thing into a circle, uh, completely, completely round. I cut off the corners on the bandsaw. I didn't film that part. And so here we're just kind of getting it trued up, getting it spinning in a circle so we can start doing what we got to do. I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to do with this. I had an idea in my head, and I'm going to let the video play out for y'all to kind of see what it turned into. Um, I had kind of an idea in my head. I didn't really want to do a bowl. I uh, just want to do something something kind of new that I hadn't tried before. So right now, like I said, we're just getting the outside all the way trued up and going to true up one of the faces as best we can. I have this mounted on a face plate right now. So what I'm going to do is you see me carving down the end here. This is going to be for a tenon. We're going to get a tenon on the right side of this so I can flip it around and put it in a chuck. So we're test fitting the chuck here so we can get it flipped around, make sure it's not too big or small. Go over here, we're going to re-true it up. Right, so here I'm kind of marking out the lip of where I want the opening to be on the front because we are gonna are gonna hollow some of this out. Kind of truing up the face here. Well, let's just say I was attempting to trip the face there. My tenon broke off completely, um, and it came flying at me, hit me in the hand, hit me in the shoulder. Uh, so here, I didn't film how I fixed it, but what I did is I put a mortise on the other side, put it in between centers and put a mortise, and I have it now in the jaws and a mortise instead of a tenon. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the parting tool to just get how much depth I want on this right now. Uh, instead of drilling out the middle because I really don't want to move the tailstock after what just happened. So we are using the parting tool to get my depth and so I can hollow out the rest of this. You know, I, I noticed when, when I was editing the video right there um, that I had the tail sock up for support. But the tail sock was not fully engaged, so it wasn't giving me a whole lot of support there. And I ended up taking it off anyway to finish out this hollowing process. See, so, I mean, I'm just checking the depth of how far I want to go, how far the tool needs to go inside the parting tool, so I know exactly where it's at, which makes it really easy with these glue ups like this because you can just kind of count the boards to see how far you've gone. So you can see exactly where you are on the outside too. Exact your depth. So it's pretty uh it's a useful part of gluing up boards like this. I had moved my lathe over a little bit further on the table and now I keep hitting my, my camera. So that's what the jerking this is. I apologize about that. Keep it in the camera with the handle of the tool. Just finishing up the inside, trying to make sure I don't have any, any dips or humps in it. 
and uh, trying to make sure we're at the exact depth that I want to go, which I actually ended up going a little bit too far. Um, it didn't hurt anything as far as the stability or anything, but I, I went further than I wanted to on the depth of this, this hollowing. Mainly because I couldn't get some uh, divots out. I couldn't get some humps out of there, so I just have to keep going and going. And I don't end up going too far. So here, here I'm doing a little bit of sanding. Uh, I did the sanding in three different stages um, as we go because the I wanted to be done with the part that was stretching out the, first, the furthest. So we sanded the inside and the lip and then went ahead and put some finish on it. Finish, same as always, started out with the axe abrasive sanding paste. Smear that around in there, get that lathe up to speed and just work that sanding paste in there. Use a little denatured alcohol to clean off any of the excess thrift that's left on there. And last but not least, shine time with the axe polish restoring paste. All right, now that we've got the inside done, I'm starting on the outside profile again. Uh, got some marks on there that. I've already, it looks like I've already cut most of them off. Um, the power one just to shape, just ending points to kind of help guide me. Here, I'm taking this uh, tailstock and I'm going to put a blunt live center in it. And I put a piece of foam in there so I could have tailstock support pressing against the bottom. I didn't want it to fly off at me again so I wanted to make sure I had tailstock support. bottom here I'm shaving away some excess on the bottom here uh, if you can see that pencil line close to the bottom that's where I want the bottom of this vessel to be so I'm using the parting tool to define that edge and I also want to get rid of some of the excess so I can start working on the on the very bottom of the piece It'll be easier to do with uh, this excess gone Check the final shape of it. I have one little hump I wanted to get out with the tool there, and then we're going to start sanding. I sanded everything 80 through 400 as I normally do. Um, again, I, I don't ever film at all because sanding to me is kind of boring. I think it's boring for everyone to sit there and watch, kind of like watch the paint dry. So I just show a little bit of it, and then we'll, then we'll skip ahead. Now that we're done sanding through 400, I'm putting a coat of sanding sealer on here. The outside of this wood shined up really nice. It had a really good shine just even with just the sanding sealer, as you can see there. almost looks like it's polished, but just burnishing that in a little bit. And then I'm going to go with the Axe Abrasive Sanding Paste again on the outside here. And we'll finish it up with the, the axe polish and restoring paste. And you can just see that shine on there looks looks really good, I think. Hey guys, if you haven't already, be sure you like the video. Hit subscribe if you haven't subscribed. 
photos go a long way into helping me continue to create content, continue to get my videos out there. Really appreciate it. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think of the video. Tell me what you think of the project. Last but not least, if y'all can share this video, help get it out there, I would greatly appreciate that. Appreciate that as well. Thank you. All right, so I have the piece flipped around again. Uh, it's in my set of cold jaws, and we are just working on the bottom here. We're gonna get the bottom concave, and then uh, get that little nub taken off here. Here I'm just using the diamond tool, so I want to get as close as I can uh, so I can get the rest of this sanded. Tent to the power sander, but it's still kind of hard to get in there with the tail stock, so we're just going to hand sand the bottom of this. The bottom of this sanded up really fast and be nice. You see here, I'm just trimming this down, and right there it fell away. At this point, I should have stopped the lathe and taken it off and sanded the rest of this off. And you'll see why here in just a second. So it got a little, little out of whack in the jaws, and that's what happened. So here, I decided to do what I should have done to originally, just take it off the lathe, and let's go ahead and just hand sand it from here off the lathe, and power sand it from here off the lathe. Right, so the finishing process was a little different on the bottom. Same three steps, the Axe abrasive paste, the denatured alcohol, and the polish uh, from Axe. But as you can see, I kind of I used a rubber band and rubber banded a blue shop towel onto my sander to do the buffing for the three things. I didn't, uh, didn't want to put it back on the lathe again. I have this thing fly at me. Try to fly at me twice now, so I was done with putting this on the lathe, I think the, the product thought it was done, so stick around for my final thoughts on the uh, project, kind of show everything, and at the very end we'll have some beauty shots, have a great week. Alright guys, let's talk about it. <clears throat> Uh, sorry about all the voiceover beginning of this video uh, yesterday I guess it was uh, the whole family was out here making a whole lot of chaos and everything so we uh, we just went with the voiceover I didn't have an intro or anything um, my original vision of this thing was like an oversized goblet almost uh, oversized chalice <clears throat> excuse me um, 
So I couldn't get this area as thin as I wanted because um, I got the bowl too deep when I did the bowl, but I still think it looks kind of cool. Um, I guess you could still drink of it. You know, if you're a giant, you know, you can grab that thing. I can almost grab it with one hand and, uh, you know, pour a good beer in there or something. Uh, the bottom, <laughs> I'm sure y'all saw uh, when uh, I was getting that nub just barely down there and I got got overconfident with it. I should have just left that, that little nub on there, went ahead and sanded and finished everything else and then just, you know, knocked that little nub off, sand the very center and put a little bit of finish on that. <clears throat> should have called it a day. That did not happen. I decided, you know, I was going to knock it off and I, I knew that my uh, coal jaws, what I had it on these things right here, I knew that it was an iffy fit to begin with, but with the tail stock support, I was confident in it. And as soon as I lost tail stock support, when that thing knocked, knocked off, and you saw what happened, it went kind of haywire. <clears throat> Which isn't the first time that's happened. Uh, as you saw earlier in the video, before I really got a shape going on it, the whole thing came off and hit me. Uh, hit me in the shoulder and scraped up my hand a little bit. Um, so, I mean, that's just one of those things if uh, you're not careful. And I was 100% confident in my uh, connections. Apparently, I shouldn't have been. I should have double-checked it, but <clears throat> it is what it is. That is one of the reasons the tenon, the tenon actually broke when it came off the whole thing. Um, this is all that was left of it right here, of the tenon. That was all that was left in the jaws. So uh, just another reason I prefer to do a mortise because uh, where it expands, the jaws expand on it instead of clamp it down because I, this is not the first tenon I've had break on me. However, I've never had a mortise um, split or anything and it come flying off the lathe so <clears throat> uh, that's that's pretty much it uh, let me know what you think down in the comments you like it um, you know do you like seeing the thing fly off and try to take me out uh, I know a couple of my friends uh, that watch these videos are probably that's probably gonna be their favorite part um, but uh, I think I, I think it turned out really well um, I'm happy with it uh let me know down in the comments what you think any any comments uh suggestions or anything like that also uh on a different note i want to say uh thank you to everyone that's been watching uh the subscribers and everything um all the likes the comments the subscriptions uh really really appreciate it um we hit over 30 subscribers i believe at this time we're at 33 which is uh i know um some people might not think that's a whole lot for me. I can't believe there's 33 people that subscribe to it. Um, and the the views and everything that, that we've been getting is awesome. I was uh, talking to, um, I think I was talking to my wife about it. And it was uh, crazy. I've had, you know, I know that's how the internet works. You know, anybody across the world can, you know, can see anything if they have internet. But it's kind of crazy to see the views that are coming in from different parts of the world. That's just, uh, amazing. Um, so, uh, appreciate everyone. Um, I'm glad y'all enjoy watching the content. I enjoy making the content. Um, if you hit that subscribe button, if you haven't already, that helps me continue to make the content, uh, liking and sharing my videos helps get the video out there for other people to see. If you could do that, it'd be greatly appreciated. Um, I think that's going to be it for this week. I uh, hope you liked it. Um, I really like the way it shined up on the outside too. That kind of glimmer. I, I think it, I think the shine took really well to the outside. So, uh, if you're interested in anything I've made, uh, for purchase, uh, if you want to purchase anything I made, everything usually gets thrown up on my Etsy store, which the link is down in the comments or down in the description, excuse me. Um, also, uh, you can join the Facebook page, which is going to be down in the description and you can check out the, the TikTok, which is pretty much just highlights of um of what we got going on on the youtube channel also the instagram is down in there too so feel free to check out follow all the socials um the, the facebook page and the instagram i kind of i kind of put on stuff like during the week when i'm doing projects kind of highlights or not really highlights but uh you know sneak peeks and stuff like that so uh feel free to follow all those and uh as far as a uh, crosscut turning shop this week we are done thank you have a great day Enjoy the rest of your week. Y'all take care.